9 FNAF games, 141 trophies. Today, we will be platinuming all the FNAF games all the way from FNAF 1 to the recent Help Wanted 2. This video has some highs and some lows, but with that, let's hop straight into our first game, Final Fantasy Freddy's 1. This video will not be including UCN, as one of the trophies includes beating 5020, and on controller, it is nearly impossible to do. So, FNAF 1, this game is extremely tough, but surprisingly not as tough as the other ones. So for this game, you work as a security guard at a pizzeria. At night, you are given a phone call by a mysterious user named Phone Guy, and all of a sudden, the animatronics become hostile. So it becomes more of a survival game, and you are forced to fend off the animatronics throughout the whole night. That is the basic premise of the first game. For anyone who isn't aware, the game's mechanics are pretty simple. You have two doors, left and right, and in each doorway, you have a animatronic which can appear, which in this case is Bonnie to the left and Chica on the right. To add on to this, you have two other animatronics, Foxy the Pirate and Freddy Fazbear himself. Where Chica and Bonnie work as door threats, Foxy and Freddy work as, well, camera threats, I'm gonna call it. Foxy's mechanics are pretty simple. You have to keep your camera at Pirate's Cove. If you fail to do this, then Foxy will eventually leave the pirate cove and sprint all the way down to your office and jump scare you. Foxy has four stages. Once he hits the fourth stage, he will run out of the pirate cove through the east hall and go straight to your office. And then you have Freddy, by far the trickiest animatronic to deal with. Freddy is by far the most difficult to deal with. The reason being is you have to keep your camera focused on Freddy and he moves in a set pattern going all the way from the main stage all the way down to the West Hall. If Freddy laughs, this is an indication that he has moved to the next camera. You have five laughs until Freddy reaches your West Hall and on the sixth laugh, if you haven't closed the East Hallway door, he will jump scare you. So that's about it for the mechanics, let's get into the trophies. This game has 10 trophies and 5 of which are to complete nights 1 to 5, which were pretty easy to do and not too hard. By checking both doorways and keeping a close eye on Foxy and most importantly Freddy, these nights went by pretty quickly. During this time, I did get jump scared, which actually gave us a trophy, so that's pretty handy. For Knights 4, there's a trophy which is pretty much keep Foxy in the Pirate Cove, and this one was pretty easy, as just keeping the camera on Foxy will basically eliminate him from leaving his cove. Moving on to Night 5, we had to keep Freddy at Cam's 4A or 4B, aka the first two cameras and if we do this we get another trophy which is pretty nice as well. So after dealing with the first five nights and getting a few nice handy trophies on the way, we now reach night six which was a little bit harder than night five but overall was pretty manageable. I used the same strats that I was using throughout my main playthrough which pretty much was check both doors, check Foxy and then check where Freddy was. If I saw Freddy reach the doorway next to me, I would simply close the door each time I would check the cameras which I was using to check on Foxy. And using this strat, I would manage to complete night six. So after completing night six, we would get our ninth trophy, leaving one more trophy left. It's the real challenge, Night 7, and this game does say Five Nights at Freddy's, but it's more like Seven Nights at Freddy's. Anyways, Night 7, 20, 20, 20, 20. This is a very difficult challenge, but with a few strats, it's actually not that bad. Let me explain. So you know how I mentioned how Freddy and Foxy are camera animatronics? Well, this is very literal as if you keep a camera on Freddy, Foxy will also be affected by the camera, essentially meaning Foxy won't leave his cove and Freddy will be stalled because you always check on him on your camera. Pretty much a win-win situation. With this strategy, the night itself isn't too bad. If you just keep a close eye on Chica and Bonnie, honestly, it's not the worst challenge ever. And trust me, these challenges get pretty rough later on. So after a few attempts, I would eventually complete night seven, giving us our last trophy, no tampering, which also gives us a pretty neat ending where we get fired. But hey, we got the platinum, so I guess we did good. And that concludes Five Nights at Freddy's 1 with a total playtime 
of one hour. Yes, you heard that right. One full hour it took me to beat this game. So it's pretty easy. And uh, now we have to move on to Five Nights at Freddy's 2, a game that is completely the opposite of what I just said. I think most people understand why this game is so hard. And if you don't know, we're going to get to it. But yeah, this game is tough. And uh, let's get into it. So FNAF 2 is a lot like the first game, but it has new mechanics, which are very nice additions to the franchise. You have a mask, which when you equip the mask, animatronics won't be able to jump scare you. Pretty neat. However, to counteract this, you have a music box, which means you eventually have to take off the mask in order to wind the music box, which can only be accessed when you are on the cameras. This is an issue, but Right now, on night one, we can rest easy as all we need to do is take a nice close look at the toy animatronics. Emphasis on Toy Chica. <clears throat> I got a few encounters with the animatronics, but nothing too bad. Wind up the music box a little and we completed our first night at Freddy's again. And this would also give us our first achievement, which is survive the first night. So night two, and we now say hello to Foxy. Another very important animatronic in this game because Foxy is smart. He is not tricked by the mask, meaning we now need to flash our light at Foxy because his eyes are super sensitive to it. Bro should have went to spec savers. So keeping our light on Foxy, we are able to get rid of him. The problem is with the music box and the animatronics entering our office, it can get a little hectic, but not hectic enough because we would complete night two and move on to night three. And again, a common trope with this game, we're gonna have more things to worry about. In this case, the withered animatronics, which are actually just really annoying. <laughs> These animatronics work the same as the toy animatronics with basically the same mechanics. It's not too hard, right? Well, we now have six animatronics to take care of, including a balloon boy, which I haven't mentioned yet, but basically, Balloon Boy is like the other animatronics, but if you see him in your left vent, you must put the mask on and wait five seconds for him to leave. If you don't do this, then he will sit in your office laughing and you won't be able to use the light, which will mean Foxy will jump scare you pretty quickly. There's also Mangle, which again is like the toy animatronics, but if you don't put the mask on, it will just stay at the top of your office and eventually will jump down and bite your head, causing the, the bite of 87. Thank you, Markiplier, for that. I appreciate it. Nice three to five went pretty smoothly. Each time an animatronic entered my office, I put my mask on, just remembering to flash Foxy and wind the music box is pretty much guaranteeing the player to make it through these five nights. I would get jump scared and that would give us another trophy, which is pretty nice as well. On night four, we would have to complete a, another challenge, which would be to keep the music box wound above 50% for the entire night. So after completing this, we would get two trophies for night four. Pretty nice, right? Two trophies in one, can't complain. Night five went by pretty smoothly without needing to complete any major challenge. You just had to really complete the night and then go on to the custom night challenges, the actual painful part. We're on seven trophies now, moving on to night six. And uh, yeah, this night is um a lot like the fifth night. In fact, it's pretty much the same, but just a tinsy bit harder. And when I mean that, I just mean you're going to get more animatronics. Nothing's going to be unfair, like a toy Bonnie being in your right vent, basically ruining the night, no matter what situation you are faced in. <coughs> Anyways, um, oh yeah, at the end of the night, I actually got Balloon Boy in my office, but somehow, somehow it was so far into the night that I just managed to pass before getting jump scared by Foxy. So I just, just managed to pass. So I was not ready for the torment night seven would bring upon me. So we would get our eighth trophy and now we would have to complete two more trophies. And uh, one of those trophies is uh, night seven. And um, like the first game, you need to max out the difficulty to complete this night. But we have 10 animatronics. Yes, we have 10 animatronics and things are about to get very hectic. So night seven on FNAF 2 is very hard. Very, very hard. A lot of it relies on RNG as essentially Toy Bonnie, if 
he appears in your right vent and you are currently being bombarded by animatronics is pretty much a guaranteed game over. Also, Foxy is a lot more aggressive and if you don't flash the light on him, he will get you very quick and the music box is now at its fastest ticking, which is uh, not good, not good at all. So the strat I ended up using for this night was the Toy Bonnie strat. Essentially, you would keep your character on the right side of the office you only go to the left side if there's no blackout, which is essentially when the animatronic is in your office. And this is pretty much because if we keep our mask on for 5.5 seconds or essentially a little bit after the animatronic leaves, we would actually get rid of all animatronics in the vents, which is pretty handy. Although this doesn't apply to Toy Bonnie, who is a lot more strict and sometimes Toy Bonnie will stay in the vent causing another blackout, which is actually longer than a normal blackout, 3 to 8 seconds, which if this happens, well, the puppet is going to get very mad and go fly fly and jump scare you. Not good. This would take me a bunch of attempts and it was one of the most stressful challenges ever. But the good news was that from dying a lot of times, we would get a lot of game overs, which sometimes if you're lucky, you may get a mini game. There are four mini games that you can get and each one has its own lore implications and I'm not going to go too far into detail on what they mean because there's already thousands of videos on that, uh, MatPat, shout out there, um, but pretty much we would get that trophy pretty quickly as uh, dying was a common thing to see in this night. After multiple hours of attempts, I would eventually get a pretty decent run and here is how it went. There was a lot of screaming, but most importantly, we had succeeded in completing the Night 7 challenge for FNAF 2, giving us the last trophy for this game, allowing us to get a platinum again, and now we would move onto 5 nights at Freddy's 3. But before we do, let's look at the total playtime. 6 hours it took me to beat this game. Honestly, could have been worse, I got a very lucky run, and you saw that ending with Toy Bonnie. If that was uh, any second longer, I probably would have been on this game for a lot more than six hours. But at last, we would reach the third game in the series. So, Five Nights at Freddy's 3. This is a game of games. It's a good game, okay? A good game. This game has you in a horror attraction based on the mysteries of Freddy's. And in this attraction, you are kind of screwed. There is no doors, there are no masks. I mean, you get a control panel and um, that's about it really. <laughs> In this game, you have one main animatronic, Springtrap. This guy is the only guy, the only animatronic which can end your game. All the other animatronics including Phantom Freddy, Phantom Chica, Phantom Puppet, Phantom Foxy, Phantom Balloon Boy and Phantom Mangle, all of them cannot end your game. However, they will give you warnings on your control panel, which will make Springtrap a lot more likely to kill you. So does that mean the game is easy? For nights 1 to 5? Yeah, yes, pretty easy indeed. During these nights, I would also complete the good ending challenges, which are essentially these weird random mini games, which essentially have you like flying into different dimensions with like Phantom Balloon Boy like going down into the depths and like walking around and like you also get to like teleport a lot there's also like this one with like uh Freddy or Fredbear or whatever his name is he like moves through the, like the walls and stuff yeah it's pretty confusing but um after a few good guides on YouTube I would complete this and also complete the first five nights, which gave us a few trophies. So we got one for the first night, second night, you get the point. And now, 
after the fifth night, after spring trapping the spring trap or spring trapping the William, we would get the good ending and a very nice tune plays as we do it. So with the true end trophy, we would now have to get three more trophies. This would be the Nightmare Trophy, which is Night 6, which is a little harder than Night 5, but not too hard where it becomes kind of RNG based. So I would eventually complete Night 6 with a bit of luck. I also got my first jump scare on Night 6, which is um a bit of a testament to that statement I mentioned before about the game being easy. I would complete Night 6 and get the third star for FNAF 3. And now... You may be thinking there's no Night 7, so um, what happens next? Well, there is an aggressive mode, and that combined with Nightmare is pretty much a Night 7, with a twist. Spring Chap is now insane, like he is like zooming through the hallways, it is nuts. And this man, after all that's happened to him for 30 years, the guy hasn't walked once, he is suddenly turned into Usain Bolt, and it becomes a complete insane challenge. The night itself is pretty much keep a eye on Springtrap. I would pretty much use audio indicators to guess or predict where Springtrap is. There's like a ambience for when he gets close to your office for cams, I believe five. And also for cam two, if he does get there, the ambience gets louder. So that was pretty helpful. Along with that, the vents were like very, very hard to deal with because when Springtrap gets in the vent, you have pretty much one to two seconds to close it or maybe three seconds if you're lucky. If not, he will just go straight to your office. So it's pretty hard. Mixed with him being very unpredictable, it makes for a very challenging night. However, after a few hours of attempts, I would get a pretty good run. Hello? Bang, 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 bang. Aggressive nightmare, done. Whew. That got me sweating. Vazbez Fright burns to the ground a second time, and that would grant us the next trophy, the Aggressive Nightmare Trophy. And with that, we have now nine trophies, but we're missing a trophy. How could this be possible? We've completed the game. Well, my friend, we need to complete the game again because there's two endings, the bad ending and the good ending. And you guessed it, we need to get the bad ending. So this pretty much required me to replay the game and after an hour of playtime, we would get spring trap, spring trapped again. We would get the trophy called the end, which is quite ironic because we just ended the game. <laughs> uh, what am I doing? So that's about it for FNAF 3 with a total of four hours. And right now we are on 11 hours with all three games played. So let's move on to FNAF 4, the spooky one, the scary one. So now you're no longer a security guard, you're a little kid. And with that, you have animatronics in your house. How is this possible? Who knows? So Bonnie and Chica kind of work the same like the first game. That's um, great. So how this works is if you flash them down the hallway, if they're there, they will like get scared of it. If they are at your like right next to you, if you hear closely, you'll hear breathing. Although it doesn't really sound like breathing, but it's breathing. So anyways, if you hear this, you need to close the door and wait until you hear footsteps going away from your room, which means they leave, which means you're not dead. And then you have Foxy and Freddy, who again are like the first game, but not really because their mechanics aren't intertwined. Instead, Freddy mechanic is pretty much look behind you. If you see these little like Freddy babies, you need to flash your light at them. And then Foxy is like in the closet. And if you see him in there, you need to close the like closet because he will jump scare you. But Foxy's a little bit different because at the beginning of the night, he will like move across the hallways like Freddy and Chica. But if you go to the wrong hallway where he's not in, he will then sneak into your office, Usain Bolt mode. And that about wraps up the mechanics for this game. That was a mouthful. There's also a story with this game with the kid and like how he's scared of animatronics and then his brother's like a bully and uh, chucks him in a suit and um, uh, it's FNAF, I mean. <laughs> okay, so. The trophies for this game, the part where you've been waiting for, you have five main trophies. Did you guess it? Yes, complete nights one to five to get yourself five trophies. Wow. Um, this game's mechanics were pretty hard to get a grip on when I first played. I was around 30 minutes in on night two 
which was um, alarming to say the least. But after watching a few more guides on YouTube, a common thing I say throughout this whole video, I would be able to get through the main game by just kind of like doing my own thing, checking for audio cues, you get the point. During the nights, there's a plus trap thing, which are, uh, well, you kind of like have to guess where he is. There's audio cues, but like he's a bit weird. The audio may not be where he is. And uh, if you flash him before he jump scares you, you win. And this will grant you two extra hours in your next night. Not like extra, but like you get to go two hours ahead in the night. <laughs> okay. And then night five comes along. And then all of a sudden, there's a big bear, a yellow bear. And he's got red eyes and he's scary and he has like 50,000 teeth. And now it's like, what's happening? So Nightmare Fredbear is kind of like all the animatronics mixed into one. He's the big bad, he's the final boss. And you pretty much have to listen to where he's going. He makes like these sounds and he may go to your right hallway, your left hallway. If you see him, shut the door or he will just go raw and like jump scare you. Also, he may get into your room. He will like do his laugh and then he will either be in your bed or your closet and to deal with this you just flash your light and he just goes away back into the hallways rinse and repeat this for six hours and what do you know you get the completion for the game night five and then the bite of 87 i mean the bite of 83 happens and then and only then will you have completed the game i'm actually joking it goes up to eight nights and for some reason this game has eight nights compared to seven nights i don't know why this is but Anyways, Night 6, honestly, not that bad. It, it's kind of a mix of the prior nights, Nights 1 to 4 and Nights 5 with Fredbear. And it's like a mixture of everything combined. And um, it's pretty manageable for the first four hours. I kind of did my original strategies by going from my left door to my right door, then to Foxy, and then going to flash my light at the Freddles. Then as 4am hit, I go to the middle of the room, listen for Fredbear's footsteps and flash him with my light if I see him. And that pretty much wraps up night 6. Not that bad. We get a cool ending with the kid, like with the Freddy plushy thing. And then night 7, kind of the same thing, but just harder. Night 7 follows the same strategies as night 6. However, when 4am hit, instead of seeing a golden Freddy, we would see a invisible Freddy Fazbear, or a Nightmare version of Freddy Fazbear. Essentially, Nightmare is a harder version of Golden Fredbear, or Nightmare Fredbear. Eventually, after multiple attempts, I would complete Night 7, and this would grant us another trophy, and then be able to move on to Night 8. But there's no Night 8 in the menu, so what do we do? Well, there's actually a little trick. If you go to night seven and you repeatedly press square, triangle, square, triangle four times, you would have maxed out the animatronic difficulty and you would get the 20, 20, 20, 20 mode. Was that 520s or 420s? I don't even know. This night was hard and it took me multiple hours of attempts. The reason being is Nightmare is the biggest, just baddest, just annoying bear I've ever seen. The guy is just really unforgiving. You have pretty much eight seconds to flash your light on him or sorry, shut the door on him. If you don't do this, then you're going to get jump scared and sent back straight to the main menu like a dummy. Not only this, but the animatronics are brutally, brutally aggressive as really you kind of want to keep Foxy away from your room as much as possible because if he enters, you're going to be very much screwed with managing all four animatronics on max difficulty. But with enough attempts, I would have a really good run. And here is how it went. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Night eight. Took me three hours. Oh, come on. Come on, man. So, um, that was something. Um, three hours of attempts, and we would then have to complete a few more trophies. Don't worry, these aren't as bad. It's just kind of like do the Nightmare Balloon Boy game, which is um pretty good. He's just like more scary now. Also, his voice dropped big time. Potentially he hit puberty. Uh Good on you, Balloon Boy, but we would get the fun trophy for completing every single one of these levels. And not only that, we would then have to get jump scared by Plush Trap, because up to this point, I hadn't 
got jump scared by the little guy and I got jump scared by him and that would give us the too bad trophy making it another Platinum for Five Nights at Freddy's, the fourth one to be exact. My total playtime for FNAF 4 was six hours, exactly like FNAF 2, and it's um pretty nice. So let's move into Sister Location, the most annoying game in the whole series. All right, so Sister Location, the exotic game of the series. How does this game play compared to the other ones? Well, it's nothing like the other ones. Instead of having nights where you have to rely on survival, this game is kind of the same but the nights are set pieces and you need to go through them according to the game. It's not like random encounters with the animatronics. Anyways, the nights themselves. Night one, you go into the rental pizzeria place or whatever it is and then you go toward the front of it and you go to baby's area, you flash the light and then night one done. Pretty hard if you ask me. After the night, we have a TV show to watch with a vampire. Um, yeah, it's, it's cool. <laughs> and then night two, um, this one is a little bit different. You have to hide and then these like bitty bads try and jump scare you. And then after that, you have to walk or in my case, run through Ballora's uh, little show and um, you have to try not die to her. And uh, with that, you go to Freddy's little Fred place with Bon Bon. And it's just a really, really good level because I actually sh pooped my pants. I was scared for my life, but I completed this first try. And then night three, uh, you have Funtime Foxy section, which is uh, walk a few times, flash your light, walk a few times, repeat this multiple times, get to Freddy again. Um, for some reason now he's uh, not uh, moving, which is uh, good, but uh, Bon Bon is moving. And for some reason, I couldn't for my life press his button. I tried. I really tried for 30 whole minutes. I really did give this a good go, but eventually I got it. And then night four, the uh, stressful section where you're in a spring trap suit. Don't worry, you won't get spring trapped as long as you crank the knobs in the suit. And then like ballerinas climb on you. It is weird, but it's uh, quite stressful. But after completing this first go again, a lot of first goes in this game, I might just be the best FNAF player ever. <laughs> Are you sure about that? We get to night five, the most difficult night. There's no like actual threat. It's just the fact that the controllers controls from a game that's made in click team is just really annoying because there's a keypad and it's super, super small. And with a controller, you have to like move your cursor onto the different buttons or the numbers that uh, circus baby is reading out and not only that you have a clown in the room or Ballora whatever it is And if you don't press the right button in time or you mess up or press anything else you're getting jump scared So this took me 40 minutes to complete 40 minutes to complete a number Selecting level, but don't worry. I completed this I listened to baby's uh, instructions and we got scooped and turned into human jelly and then we would complete the main game for the next trophy, we would have to become Circus Baby and play through her 8-bit level where we would basically give the ice cream to the girl, who is, I believe, Elizabeth Afton. She would eat the ice cream before Baby eats her. And then after that, it's pretty much ended time with a sick boss battle music. We would have to actually go through that um, number pad level again. Not ideal, but I got a bit better this time. And uh, yeah. And in time, uh, this is pretty easy. Listen for his um, clanging or banging or whatever it is, and then shut that appropriate door. Repeat this for ten whole minutes. I think it's nine minutes, but something like that. It's it's long. Um, I would complete the exotic butters trophy, surviving until morning, and then for some reason, Enid is in our house. Um, okay, uh, and then after that, it's um custom night challenges. This was just so fun. I actually would love to play this all again and experience all. This was the worst experience of my whole life. I'm not going to get into detail about all the mechanics because this game's mechanics are like Ballora's ballerina dancing audio thingy and uh, the bon bon go get him and it's just so painful. So painful. And then Bonnet. Why? Why is this even in the PlayStation port? Why do I have to touch Bonnet's nose on PlayStation with a cursor controlled by a joystick? It was the worst experience ever created for mankind. Because each time you exit the camera, for some reason your cursor is the same place where you exit the camera. So I'd have to place my cursor exactly where I would 
potentially meet with Bonnet's, like, little snout. And I'd have to, like, use my measurement and geometry and I'd work out how to do it each time. And, uh, it took me six and a half hours, but I did it. On the seven hour mark, I would have an attempt that got me one second away from completing the night, but, um, I died. But don't worry, because an hour and a half later, on the eight and a half hour mark, I would get a run that went like this. <laughs> My mic was off. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. That took me eight hours. Oh my god. After completing that awfully hard Golden Freddy mode, I will then have to complete all the custom night challenges for the You Won't Die trophy. But I actually wouldn't complete all the challenges because PlayStation is glitched, I guess. You only have to complete seven out of the ten custom night challenges to get the trophy. It's weird. I don't know why it's the case, but anyways, we got that trophy nicely done and then meet the cast, which are you have to get all the jump scares in the game. So I had to replay the game to get all the jump scares or the ones that I didn't get the first playthrough, which took me around an hour to do. And then after that, I would get meet the cast and complete sister location. All right, the total play time for this game for me was 17 long excruciating hours. I never ever want to touch this game on console again. Okay, let's move on to Pizzeria Simulator. All right, so Pizzeria Simulator, let's get into the first trophy, which would be the completion trophy. I'd complete the whole game, including salvaging, including going through the nights and including decking out my pizzeria. And then on the Saturday shift, when everything's in my vents, I would complete the night and then get to the completion ending with this sick ending cutscene. My God, this is still really good to this day. I'd also die sometime in between this playthrough, giving us the dead trophy. Ah, uh, that's very convenient. After this, I felt pretty exhausted. So I got the mediocre ending. This literally means you don't press a button. You just do all your tasks. You get rid of everything on the salvage and you don't do anything to your pizzeria. Doing this will get you the mediocre ending, walk the fine line between pride and disappointment. Can't describe my life any better than that. Next was the bankrupt ending. We actually needed to get bankrupt. To do this, I would get my risk a little bit up by spending a lot of money. And then by doing this, we would get lawsuits. Um, these lawsuits are ridiculous. One of these lawsuits are getting bitten by an animatronic. Um, does that have any law relevance, MatPat? <laughs> We are in debt. <laughs> you gave it your best shot. Anyways, doing this, I'd get the bankrupt ending. Cue the trophy number three. Let's go. And next was the insanity ending. So for this ending, you have to play through the game normally. But by night six, you'd have to buy the egg baby machine. That's um just odd. But at $6,000, you buy this. And then by night six, once you play it, you just turn off everything. Wait a couple, 10 seconds, 30 seconds. And then by turning on the TV again, I'd get the insanity ending. So for ending number five, I would go for the law keeper ending. For this ending, you have to complete three of the arcade law relevant games. This includes uh, Midnight Motorist, the Chica like Pac-Man game, and then the puppet game or the security puppet game, whatever you want to call it. After completing all three arcade games, I would get the Law Keeper ending, and that would leave us with one ending to go, the blacklisted ending. By far, the hardest challenge in this game. For this ending, play through the game as usual. You would salvage, you go through the nights, and on night six, or before night six, you need to have at least 50 risk which pretty much involves the player buying a bunch of faulty equipment. And by doing that, you would increase your um, risk level. I would buy the lefty uh, animatronic, which would get me nine risk, which is very beneficial for this ending. And by completing night six, I would get the blacklisted ending. The next trophy is the gamer trophy, a very difficult trophy. And it's for one reason alone, the Galaxy Vortex game. This game is brutal because you can see a bunch of uh, circly dots around the screen. If you touch any of these ones, you're dead. And um, this 
was hard because each night you'd get 10 tokens and after depleting each token, you can't get these anymore until the next night. So to combat this, I would simply upload my data onto my PlayStation Drive and then each time I deplete my tokens, I would just reboot my save to the point where I get 10 tokens again. So after around an hour and a half of playing this one arcade game, I would eventually complete Galaxy Vortex. There's also a bunch of games like basketball and there's this pizza like galaxy ride game which is pretty cool there's monkey bars there's a bunch of stuff to do and for some reason i didn't get the trophy because i'd actually hadn't fully ever completed midnight motorist i'd always go for the secret in the level so after completing midnight motorist which was pretty easy i would get the gamer trophy so the next trophy for pizzeria simulator is going to be the accomplished trophy to get this you need to get all the animatronic sets in the game including every single animatronic the first set that I got was the Trash and the Gang set. This was pretty easy to get. After this was the Mediocre Melodies. The next set was the Rockstar Assemble. And lastly, the Posh Pizzeria. To do this all in one playthrough, I would have to use the Lucky Dip arcade games. And this has a chance of pulling a Music Man. And also, if you're lucky in the more expensive lucky dip level you can also earn fun time chica which is really good as that saves around 80 to 90 thousand dollars pretty nice stuff i would also try and get as much discounts for the animatronics as i possibly could and with that i would eventually get the accomplished trophy and after this it would be the terminated trophy the last trophy in this game this one pretty much requires you to have at least one animatronic in the pizzeria furthermore just keep your risk at zero or as close to zero as possible and you should get the terminated ending which meant we had concluded pizzeria simulator with a total play time of 14 hours so let's move on to fnav vr also known as help wanted but at the time of recording the help wanted gameplay i didn't have a vr set so for help wanted one there's gonna be no vr gameplay big sad so as soon as i loaded into help wanted i would press the party machine which gives us a trophy your special day I then played FNAF 1 and found a secret coin, which gives us another trophy, this one called Less Party. So as I was looking around at the FNAF 1 office, I found an option that allowed me to leave the actual office itself. So me being the smart person that I am, I left the office getting jump scared by Foxy a few moments later. And that gave us two trophies, which is quite convenient. The stay put trophy for leaving the office and the jump scared trophy. I scream, you scream. After completing the first night, I would get some candy, which I would eat. It was very nice, but even more nice. I got a trophy. Now I will tell your story. This gives some candy cassette flashbacks. Good days. Now I think it's my time to tell your story. After the mangle vent repair level, I would get a mini version of Bonnet. I saw an option to eat this and um, me being quite smart, I ate it and well, got a trophy because of my stupidity, which is well something I guess, but this gave us the choking hazard trophy. The next lot of trophies are in the repair levels. The first one is in the Bonnie repair. If you press on each of Bonnie's strings on his guitar, you will grab a nice trophy called Rock. And the next trophy for the repair levels is in the Chica repair. To do this, you'd simply have to just get rid of 25 cockroaches off Chica. So after pulling 25 cockroaches off Chica, we would get the pest control trophy. And by the way, how massive are these cockroaches? Fazb Entertainment, you need to do something about these. That is disgusting. Also, throughout the nights, there's a chance you can get a jump scare prize. And lucky me, I would grab one pretty decently early on. And when I say this, halfway through the whole playthrough, which gave us the Pop Goes the Weasel trophy. And by the way, Plush Trap, you still haven't jump scared me normally. And um, the next trophy we would get would take a couple more hours, as I literally had to complete the whole game to grab this next trophy so after around two to three hours of just grinding through the levels in the game i would get into the pizza party level and after following well more like instinctively following my gut i would eventually find glitch trap and this would give us the ending to the game and a nice trophy named exotic butters I would then go to the prize counter and grab myself a nice little Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica toy. And if we put these three onto the prize counter, we would grab ourselves the Showtime trophy. 
For this next trophy, we would have to grab all of the edibles in the game. So what I ended up doing is just repeatedly farming the Bonnie repair level as this level is quick and you can easily replay it. So after farming this for around 40 minutes, I would grab not only all the edibles, but all the items in the game. So for grabbing all the items in the game, I would grab the play trophy. I would then go to the prize counter, eat up all the edibles, and with that grab the less eat trophy. There's also 30 coins in this game, and the coins are scattered throughout the many levels present in the game. So I would go through all the levels, replaying them, seeing if I missed any coins, and after a good solid chunk of time, grab the numismatic trophy. With 14 trophies, and I've made a mistake, I actually got the platinum after completing the less eat trophy so after completing every single trophy I would grab the platinum for this game which means we have completed help wanted so now let's get into security breach which by far has the most trophies out of any game in the series so for the first trophy I would just jump around just literally jump around do nothing and somehow somehow I would get the dodge and weave trophy for successfully evading a bot in pursuit I then ran into my first obstacle in this game Chica I could you not, she actually chased me for around 4 minutes. I'm not even joking, I was running from Chica for 4 minutes straight. But eventually, she would catch up to me and I would get jump scared. Which gave us the surprise trophy. Honestly, I'm more surprised how she kept chasing me for 4 minutes straight. But anyways, on to the next trophy. I would make it through the terrifying moon playground level. And getting into the reboot machine, I would grab the sleepover trophy for surviving the daycare. I would then make pizza for Chica, and no, not because I felt bad for Chica, it's because she was literally going to jump scare me if I didn't, so I got a trophy, so I guess it's a win-win. I would then sneak into Chica's room, and no, I didn't want a tip for the pizza. Instead, we would grab the party pass, which conveniently was on her desk. So after grabbing that, I would grab the party time trophy. I would then progress through the game until we reached the Faza Blast level on 4am, when after completing it, I would grab the laser ace trophy. I would then grab the Monty Mix where I would pretty much place it down and trick Chica into eating it. And then we proceed to absolutely demolish the animatronic. Um, this time, maybe it was for revenge for the pizza, but anyways, we grabbed her voice box and grabbed the Speak No Evil trophy. After progressing through Roxy Raceway, I found out that I wasn't old enough to play the go-kart, so I would have to go through the West Arcade, and this would grant us the Wub 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 trophy. So, um, yeah, next trophy, the Roxy Raceway trophy. I would pretty much go into my go-kart and uh, crash it into Roxy, which, uh, well, let's just say I grabbed her eyes and we got the See No Evil trophy, and I pretty much see no problem in that. I also see that only 99.5% of you are not subscribed. So if you've made it this far into the video and you do enjoy the content, then please subscribe anyways back to the video. <clears throat> uh, anyways, moving on, the next trophy I would get is the Superstar Trophy for escaping the Mega Pizza Plex. We also had to say bye to Glamrock Freddy, truly the saddest moment in FNAF history. I also forgot that you could hide in this game, but this actually turned out to be a positive because one of our trophies is to complete the game without hiding. So I got the hide and seek master trophy. Also by exploring the Faza Blast level, you can find Fanny's hideout. And by doing this, you get a new option for a new ending, the Vanny ending. And uh, let's just say Freddy gets um, decommissioned. And this gives us the I am not me trophy. Throughout the Pizza Plex, there are these Princess Quest arcade games. By sheer luck, these arcade levels actually work and you can play like this Princess Quest 2D arcade game, and when we complete the second one of these arcade games, which is found in the West Arcade, you actually get the trophy, a double-edged sword, and hey, it's the FNAF 1 office. How cool is this? The next Princess Quest arcade game can be found during the Vanny ending, and when we get toward her hideout, when we have to press the button that, like, turns the security bots against her. There's actually a Princess Quest arcade cabinet found in the corner of her room. Once we complete this arcade level, we then also kill the glitch trap. Remember that guy? Yeah, we actually get rid of him completely. And 
This grants us the Are You Having Fun Yet trophy. The next thing to do was to grab all the security badges in the game. So I went to the office which I hadn't been to yet and I activated the lockdown which pretty much gives you like a classic Five Nights at Freddy's experience with the animatronics going toward the doors. I find this really cool because you actually get to use the cameras which is probably the first time I used them in the whole playthrough of Security Breach. So after completing this, I would grab the false alarm trophy. I then found Chica's Bakery which can can be found behind Monty Golf and this area is actually an area which isn't really present during the main playthrough but can be explored post game so after exploring this place I would grab the no room for dessert trophy. I'd also grab the faz cam which is the last equipment that I needed to complete the full set and with that I would go to the theater where I would take a photo of the performer giving us the say cheese trophy. I will then have to play through the maze size level. By far the worst thing I've ever Ever experienced in a game but luckily there are some guys on YouTube that explain it in very good detail so thank you for all the guides out there you've really saved our security breach players thank you so much so after completing the Monty boss fight I would grab his claws and grab the claw no evil trophy and by destroying every single animatronic in the whole game I would then grab the shattered dreams trophy somehow I missed a security badge in the West arcade and apparently a lot of people missed this as well on their first playthrough but I came back to the West Arcade and grabbed my last security badge granting me level 8 security access and giving us the security breach trophy for getting every single badge in the game. This next trophy was a little bit embarrassing so to get this trophy you have to like use the Fazer cam on four posters throughout the whole pizza plex. Once you do this the door toward Moon and Sun's like little back room opens and then you can play the Balloon Boy arcade game. So I spent around two hours trying to get the highest score possible thinking that you have to get a really high score to complete this game but in actual reality all I had to do was just go toward this purple glitch thing and go inside of it and this would literally give me the trophy so I wasted two hours of my life but hey I got a really high score of 55,000 so uh if you've bet that then um leave it in the comments below I then lashed out all my anger on the performer which after zapping it I grabbed the heckler trophy next was to grab all the collectibles in the game and and during my collectible marathon, I would grab all the fizzy faz cans, which gave me the sugar high trophy. Just after this, I would grab the last message in the game, which gave us the lost and found trophy. And around an hour later, after grabbing every single present in the whole game, I would grab the very important person trophy. So this next trophy, I actually forgot, but it's actually an early game trophy. To do it, you need to destroy 10 plates. And to do this, I pretty much went to the kitchen area and kept on using the reboot machine and after multiple times doing this I would regenerate the world and be able to complete the Oppa trophy. At this point I was ready to tackle Burn Trap in the final boss fight in the game and by doing this I grabbed the Hazard Pay trophy. I actually didn't have to complete the boss fight as the trophy is simply rewarded to the player when they get toward the elevator but hey why not destroy Burn Trap in the process? Win win for me. And the last trophy in this game was the Under Par trophy. This pretty much means go toward Monty's golf, use the arcade game, and just complete the whole golf course without going over the par, which is 27 in total. And with that, I grabbed the platinum for security breach, which is the trophy time trophy. How many times do I have to say trophy? We're done with this game. Let's move on to the next one. So after nearly three weeks of not playing FNAF games, I would return for the release of Help Wanted 2. And after going to a stop to my local EB Games, grabbing myself a VR set, I would wait for the new FNAF game and at 4am I would go on my VR and begin my new journey. So at around 4 a.m. in the morning, I was a little bit tired, a little bit colorblind, a little bit fatigued. So I would basically mix up the painting, which is um, not good because Sun doesn't like this. And he would jump scare me and I would get the liability risk trophy. Moving on to the Foxy ride, I would see a helpy cutout and I would think to myself, what if I shoot the helpy cutout? Well, I shot the helpy cutout and I was transported into an alternate dimension where I would grab the splash zone trophy. And then I was in the main menu after a horrific jump scare from, well, Halloween Moon or Jacko Moon or whatever his name is. I would then hear the hippo speak to me and I moved to the hippo and consulted it and it would give me some advice for what would come later. And also 
I would get the Your Time to Shine trophy. So this next one comes a little bit later on in the game. I played through majority of the levels. It was early in the morning. I was just getting through stuff, enjoying my time in Help Wanted 2, and then the Fizzy Faz nights. These nights were pretty okay, the first few. And on one of the nights, I would actually complete the night without wasting a single Fizzy Faz ingredient, which is awesome because this gives me the bonus revenue trophy. And we move on to Bonnie Bowling, an experience worthwhile in VR. Playing the bowling in VR was awesome. You know, you have Moon, you know, trying to come in from the ceiling, the plush babies, and also you have the occasional hitting the wall, which is, um, let's just say, happened a little bit during this playthrough. And to conclude my bowling match, I would get a score of around 40. I, I'm pretty proud of that score, you know? I'm, I'm gonna count that as a success. Magically, I got the GGY trophy for beating the high score. I think the game just felt bad for me, to be honest. So, moving on to Bonker Bon. This trophy required me to only hit Helpy on the first round. So, after doing this and completing it flawlessly beside the first round, I would grab the Snap trophy. So, after a power nap to resurge my energy, I would hop back into the world of FNAF Help Wanted 2 and tackle the Roxy levels. I'd also be completely baffled after just mucking around with my VR controller and accidentally taken off the mask, which took me to a new dimension where everything was harder. But hey, we went to the Roxy level and she suddenly lost her face, but it's okay because after completing this level, I would grab the Nobody Likes a Loser trophy. You then have the Helpy Repair levels where you would pretty much have to repair Helpy and occasionally watch out for the occasional scream from your patient and the occasional ad going on the TV. After one of my runs with Helpy, it completely was screaming. I nearly died, but managed to survive. So I got a little bit angry. So in my spite, I grabbed the food and started chomping it down. But unfortunately, the thing started screaming again. I would shut it up, but grab the taking candy from a baby trophy. I eventually completed all of the health and safety tasks, including severing off Helpy's head. That one actually felt kind of nice. But anyways, and this granted us the health and safety trophy. And we move to the sister location levels, by far the bread and butter of this game. I really enjoyed these levels, they were absolutely amazing. And we have a new character in the mix, the fun time Chica, a character absent in the sister location. Essentially, she's very easy to maneuver. Every time she gets to your left hallway, you just switch the cupcake to the right side, vice versa if she gets to the right hallway. Pretty simple stuff. I would eventually complete the night without her even coming to my doorway, which granted me the cupcake keep away trophy. Next, we found ourselves back in the Fizzy Faz levels, and this time I would give every one of my staff a nice rested break. Because, not because I wanted to, because they were literally going to kill me if I didn't. But, hey, I got the everyone's favorite boss trophy. The next game, I would find myself in an endo facility, where I would teach a robot how to be a robot. This trophy required me to, at the same time, use my Faz cam on all the animatronic endos in the room. And doing this accidentally, I didn't mean to do this, but because I was panicking, I just flashed every single endo in my room that... Anyways, we got the picture day trophy. And next, we were in the FNAV 2. Not in the actual FNAV 2 building, but a cutout version with a Fazer Blast, a nail gun, and a nice bunch of balls. I would absolutely demolish the targets, hitting 20 with my balls and grab the bullseye trophy. Why do I sound so sus? And also by shooting the plush babies, I would grab the they had it coming trophy. I would then grab all the Power Ranger kind of animatronic little toys, if you want to call them that. And by grabbing every single one of these toys, I would grab a big box. One would spawn in, I'd open it and a cutscene would play, ending my playthrough of Help Wanted 2 and grabbing myself, the batteries not included trophy for completing Help Wanted 2. Now it was time to grab all the other trophies I missed on my first playthrough, so immediately I'd hop into Bonker Bon and destroy eight light bulbs, grabbing me the lights out trophy. I would replay Bonker Bon and when I got the flip kind of thing where the whole table flips, I would pretty much input the code backward by say you get one, two, three, four, I put four, three, two, one. And in this case, this worked, and I got a Bonnie 
plush thing, which was kind of awesome because I would grab the Remember Jeremy trophy. I then found myself back in the Fizzy Faz level to make myself a graveyard. Before you ask what that is, pretty much I would grab the beautiful smoothie, I would pour some of this soda Fizzy Faz, and then I would grab every single one of these ingredients, turn it into one beautiful blendy, and then by shipping it off to Amazon, I would grab the Graveyard Shift trophy. And also, a plushie came out of the kind of delivery machine, which I grabbed, and now I would have to grab every single one of these plushies. There are six in total. We had two, so I had to grab four more. One of these included me fighting Springtrap, not the actual one, a cutout version, which gave me the Freddy plushie. I then went to sister location, and the drawer that was under me magically opened, and I inputted the code 1983, because that's the year the bite of 83 happened. And this got me another plushie, the Puppet plushie. And next was the Foxy game where after shooting every single helpy cutout things, we would basically be able to shoot these blue stars. There are four in total. And once you shoot all these blue stars, you would be taken into a random lake, which gave you another plushie. And then on the hard mode of the Chica kitchen level, I pretty much dumped every single Chica treat into the rubbish bin, including the Chica drink, the Chica blendy, some like falafel thingy, and just the Chica bar. And this grabbed me the Chica plushie. After collecting all these plushies, I would grab the purple coin. And with that, I would insert it into the Princess Quest arcade cabinet. And this sent me into a VR frenzy. I went hello there and absolutely demolished every single bad guy acting like I was Obi-Wan Kenobi. I even said the line a few times during my playthrough, but I would eventually get to the end of this and grab myself the Consequences Trophy and a cool Vanny cutscene plays. Next, I would boop Funtime Freddy's nose, risking my life, but hey, I got the boop trophy, so can't complain. We then hopped into the kitchen level and I would shoot the server with a source gun, giving me the food fight trophy. I then dropped some food, you know, just farted on it and eventually after five seconds grabbed it served it five second rule trophy next i hopped into the ballora level where i would grab a mini rena and yeet it all the way back to wherever that thing came from granting me the tiny dancer trophy i then hopped into bonnie bowling and i would have to suffer the torment of having to bowl a turkey um let's just say i hit my wall a few times in that now there's a permanent dent in my bedroom wall but hey I bowled a turkey, popped a little dance, proceeded to hit a gutter ball, but I grabbed myself the Gobble Gobble Trophy. Moving on to the carnival level, I would grab the pumpkin and chuck it at Moon's face. This one felt amazing to do because just stuff Moon. No one likes him. I then painted every single animatronic, including the security bot, Roxy, and Shattered Roxy, and I painted them all dark green, which got me the It's Not Easy trophy. Next was to grab Helpy's eye and chuck it at an animatronic. This one gave me the You Never Know Until You Try... <gasps> Um, excuse me. This gave me the you never know until you try trophy. Next, I found myself back in the Princess Quest level. And if you input the order of the animatronic characters, like their deaths from the purple guy, which is Chica, Foxy, Freddy, Bonnie, Golden Freddy, Puppet, I'm a FNAF genius. MatPat has nothing on me. Anyways, if you input that code, you would grab yourself the Bonnie mask, which gave you or gave me the lost luggage trophy. And then after going through the Vanny cutscene, again, I would get the Your Hide trophy for completing every single level in the game. Next, I would go back to the robot level where I would give it a nice little makeover, making it turn into Monty, giving me the Monty understudy trophy. We then hopped into the daycare where I would eat some glue, but this gave me the You Are What You Eat trophy. And if you are watching this video, you should subscribe. I've just given myself pain. For the next trophy, I hopped into the Fazer Blast level where I would for two minutes straight absolutely torment the Carney animatronic. And after two minutes of non-stop shooting it, I would grab the Heckle, the Heckler trophy. Next was to complete the Bunker Bon level just using one hand. So doing that, I would grab the Seeing Red trophy. Next was to grab all the items from the Claw game at the end of each level. So if you remember what I did for Help Wanted 1, I pretty much just grinded the repair level section in this game, the Freddy level. And after doing this for around an hour and a half to two hours, I grabbed every item and collectible in this game, granting me the Hoarder trophy. Next was to eat 200 items in the game. It's not certain if it's 200 exactly, but pretty much eat a lot of items. I just pretty much farmed items at the back of the pizzeria. Just kept on eating, restarting, eating for a whole 10 minutes. And after that, 
I would grab the All You Can Eat trophy and I would grab myself the Platinum for this game, the Shift Complete Trophy. 37 trophies done and dusted and I finished Help Wanted 2 with a total of 15 hours played and we end off every single Five Nights at Freddy's game on PlayStation with a total playtime of 80 hours. And this took me around, if we're not including the two week break or three week break that I took for Help Wanted 2, it took around 18 days to complete every single Five Nights at Freddy's game. I started my playthrough on the 5th of November, finished on the 18th of November with Security Breach and then went back on this game for Help Wanted 2 and then finish that in two days. So 18 days in total. And the overall amount of trophies we collected throughout this journey was around 141 trophies. And with that, we conclude this video. Those were all nine PlayStation FNAF games, except UCN, because um, if I touched UCN, let's just say more holes would have been put into my wall. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. If you have, then consider smashing a like button. And if you do enjoy this type of content, consider subscribing as well. And until next time, take it easy and goodbye.